Railways in the Balkans have certainly earned themselves quite the reputation. They are definitely not known for their high quality, their high speed, or even sometimes their safety record. Well today I'll be showing you something very different, as I take a ride on board Serbia's own high speed train. With its modern standards of comfort and safety, I'll be taking this brand new express train on a journey between Serbia's two biggest cities and reviewing the quality of this exciting new step for rail travel in the Balkans. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm here in Serbia in the city of Novi Sad and I'm going to be taking the brand new high speed train down to the capital city, Belgrade. I'm booked in first class for this journey, let's go. Welcome to Novi Sad's recently overhauled station, just a short walk away from the city's lively centre. There's quite a lot to see here, so let's head inside and take a look around. All main entrances to the station are surrounded by a makeshift netting construction, which you don't often see. I assume this is to keep birds from flying in. The first thing you'll see in the building is this large main hall, which I think is just oozing with character. Here you will find the ticket office, along with a selection of seating and plants. Some of the ticket office counters have been converted to serve as a post office and bank. However, there are now a few ticket machines on offer too. You also have the option to book in advance using the fairly decent Serbiovoz website. This is only available in Serbian, but should be easy enough to use. More information about the price of tickets near the end of the video. Novi Sad station is one full of art and history. The biggest example of this has to be the wall art in the main hall. The approach to the station features a small garden, and there's even a static steam locomotive dating back to the Yugoslav era. The rest of the station is accessed by use of stairs, though don't worry, lifts are available too. Up here, you can find a gallery area, but I'd personally call this more of a museum. There's so much information on the railways here, including a few artefacts and railway paraphernalia. Of course, there are plenty of pictures too, so if you're interested in learning about the railways, then be sure to plan extra time here. Just beyond the gallery room, there's an open balcony, which during weather like this provides a great view over the station forecourt. Back inside the station, we can find a children's play area for families to use while awaiting their booked train, and a small comfortable waiting room with TV. Lastly, there's a COVID-19 info room, for some reason. Meals are not provided on the train today, but the station does have a restaurant. I didn't see any food though, just plenty of alcohol. Let's head out to the platform and await my train's arrival. The first thing you'll notice here is that the station isn't quite finished. The high-speed rail project in Serbia is still under construction, with only the short section of line I'll be travelling on today presently in operation. This part of the route runs from Belgrade, Serbia's capital city, here to the city of Novi Sad, the country's second largest. An intermediate stop is made in the suburb of Novi Biograd. In the future, the line will operate onwards to Subotica, at the north of the country. It is then planned for trains to cross the border into Hungary and run to Budapest, finally reconnecting the European capitals after the service was temporarily stopped in early 2019. An hourly service is provided on the route. I'm waiting for the 1536 arrival, which will then form the 1600 departure down to Biograd Centar. Serbia is a digraphic country, meaning that it uses two different alphabets simultaneously. Whilst this definitely makes it easier for a foreign tourist, it was also really interesting to see signage in Cyrillic and Latin. Anyway, here comes my train from Belgrade. This is one of just three Stadler Kiss units built for Serbia Voz, the national operator of the country. The four car units are exceptionally similar to the ones used by Westbahn in Austria and Deutsche Bahn in Germany. In fact, they were part of a follow on order to this fleet, which enabled a speedy delivery. The trains were ordered in April 2021 and entered service less than a year later, in March 2022. The service is named Soko, with a smart brand to accompany it. Soko means Falcon in Serbian, a reference to the service's high speed. These trains are fully accessible, even featuring a sliding step for level boarding. 
and I'm sure I don't even need to explain why that's such a massive change to other trains in the region. Anyway, let's get on board. I'm travelling in first class today, which is located on the top deck of coach 4. This is in a 2 plus 1 seating layout, as you'd expect. We'll take a look at second class later on in the video. I'll be travelling in seat number 15, a rear facing window seat. By the way, I was making this journey with a friend, and the seat allocation system gave us this seat and this seat. Not very convenient, but thankfully other passengers were okay with swapping so we could sit next to each other. As we depart Novi Sad on time at 1600, let's take a look at today's route. Today's route takes us on a simple southeasterly ride across the northern part of Serbia, comprising entirely of brand new high speed track. The journey is scheduled to take 36 minutes to cover the 76 kilometers or about 47 miles. Leaving Novi Sad, we can catch a glimpse of the construction work taking place. It's clear that the future for railways in Serbia is looking bright. We cross over the River Danube, one of Europe's longest rivers that traverses 10 countries on its way to the Black Sea. With such a short journey ahead of us, it's time to take a look at the interior. First class on the Sokol consists of just 24 seats here on the top deck. They're presented very nicely, with a smart leather design. There's not too much in the way of padding here, but the ergonomics are really good. This made for a comfortable journey. The headrest is also pleasant, and has large wings for resting on. All seats get a pair of adjustable armrests, which are very comfortable thanks to their padding. Beneath these, you can find the controls for the individual reading lights, these being found beside the headrest. There's also a single European style socket for each passenger, located betwixt each seat. Personally, I found the forced upright posture of the seats really unpleasant. Thankfully, a great amount of recline is available, adjusted by pushing this button and sliding forwards. It doesn't take long before we're up to our maximum speed of 200 km an hour. This part of the journey is spent alongside the River Danube, with the other side of it being home to the Kovilsko Petrovaradinsky Rit Nature Reserve. Legroom here on the Soko is very generous, with plenty of room to stretch out. Note that this is considerably reduced if you choose to recline your seat. The seat in front of you hosts a storage net, where you can put smaller items. Above this, there's a very well sized seat back table. Both first class and second class have an at seat snacks and drinks service, albeit at an extra charge. To avail of this, simply flag down a member of staff and let them know what you want. I went for a cup of hot chocolate, and I've got to say it was some of the best I've ever had. This cost 180 Serbian dinars, which is pretty good value for money too. Our journey continues through the Serbian countryside. The scenery might not be anything too special compared to what the country can offer further south, but it's still a relaxing journey. However, the speed is unlike anything else, as with the exception of a very few short sections in neighbouring Croatia, railways in the Balkans are often just a fraction of the speed. In fact, this is the previous train that used to operate on the Novi Sad to Belgrade route. These brutal Soviet trains were built in the 1980s, and the less said about their battered interiors the better. Anyway, let's go and have a look around the rest of the train. Plenty of toilets can be found throughout the consist, and curiously, these are gender specific. These were in great condition, as you'd expect for a new train. They even featured a urinal, in the men's room at least. They featured both soap and disinfectant, which were both working fine. There is of course also water, and a hand dryer is provided too. Coach 2 is where you'll find the wheelchair accessible toilet, as well as dedicated wheelchair spaces. 
By the gangway in this carriage, there's a catering area. On the other operators of these trains, you can use vending machines here, but on Soko, it is simply a storage and preparation area for the at-seat service. One more thing. These trains are fitted with free Wi-Fi. No sign-up is needed, so you can just connect straight away. These speeds were fairly good too. Despite being a high-speed line, the route still has a few intermediate stations. This is Stara Pazova, a town with a population of roughly 65,000 people. Stations like this are not served by high-speed Soko trains, instead having a local service running every hour or two. As we enter Batainitsa and pass through its flying junction, this is a sign we're entering the city of Belgrade. Batainitsa is the outer limit of Belgrade's commuter rail network, named BG Voz. It's still operated with those ancient Soviet trains that formerly ran on the Novi Sad route. Not long after, we see Zemun Depot, the maintenance base for the modern Stadler fleet in Serbia. Though of course no railway depot in the Balkans would be complete without a few burnt out wrecks. Our presence in the outskirts of Belgrade is apparent now, as the busy roads and tower blocks come into view. The train starts slowing as we approach our only intermediate stop today. This is Novi Biograd, which translates as New Belgrade. It's taken the form of Belgrade's business district, having started construction in 1948 as a planned city. Anyway, we're now just a few minutes away from our destination, so let's talk about how much this journey cost. I bought a one-way first-class ticket at a cost of just 380 Serbian dinars. This is incredible value for money. The Soko service offers comfort, speed, frequency and service, so to get all of that for such a low cost is truly fantastic. Great job! The last part of our journey sees us crossing the river Sava, just metres away from its confluence with the river Danube. We are currently heading towards Belgrade's new station, the controversial Biograd Centar. The station has received criticism for its poor location, with almost no transport connections despite being located fairly far from the centre. Locals are understandably also not a fan of the fact the station is still not even close to being finished, despite construction having started over 15 years ago. Arrival here is on time, at 16.36. I've got to say, I was thoroughly impressed with Serbia's Soko service. It's a fast way to get around, with comfortable trains so I can't wait to see this offering expanded further in the country and even across borders. But as always, let me know what you thought of Soko in the comments section, and for a look at my 10 hour late journey aboard Serbia's stunning overnight train, then click up here now.